All right, Rabbi Yanofsky, if there's any time you can't hear me, let me know. Okay. I, I, I would like to define the bracha of both Rufa'inu and uh, Asher Yatza in, in a way that it speaks to us, in a way that it's Pail Yeshua's. And so let me start this shir saying as follows. This is really a shir which is a tribute to Atzala. You know, the, del- the selfless dedication of Atzala yeah, is, is unsurpassed. You know, it's, it's beyond belief. You know, they, it's selfless, it's dedication. And I would like to clearly demonstrate that Hatzalah doesn't just save lives, but they are the primary cause for our Kaddish Baruch Hu to heal our Chaylem, both prematurely and to heal our Chaylem, the Maylem and the uh, And I'd also like to demonstrate clearly that uh, we too have that ability to cause our Kaddish Baruch Hu to prematurely heal all our ill people and to uh, heal them the Maylem and the Teva and a Rafur Shlema. So let's start as follows. There are two brachas that uh, regard regarding health, healing, and illness. The first one, which many people say a few times a day, that's the bracha Asher Yatsar. Asher Yatsar talks about the anatomy of a person, its complex anatomy, its sophisticated. Asher Yatsar is Adam B'chachma with wisdom. Uvaragon, the coven, the coven, chalun, chalun. And uh, it has to work. It has to work. It's a very delicate uh, anatomy. And it ends off, Reife Kolbaso Maflilasis. That if Kosh Baruch keeps everything perfect, and but if Chas Vishalom, something becomes imperfect or it's broken or it's not functioning properly, so he's a Reife Kolbaso. He heals all flesh, flesh and blood. blood. It means he heals all mankind. It makes no difference to Yid or Um Sa'ilam. Kosh Baruch the healer. That's the First bracha. Then there's a second bracha that we say in the Shema Esrei, and that's the bracha of Rifa'enu. Rifa'enu Hashem v'Nei That bracha is a bakasha. That's not a birchus Hashemach. It's not a birchus Ada. It's purely a request from Hakadosh Baruch Hu that He should heal us, those who are ill. And uh, over there, it finishes off Rifa Chole Ama Yisrael. Now, the end of the bracha, that bracha, right, Bechol Ama Yisrael, that's not a bakasha. Before the baruch is our bakasha, is our request. At that point, it's a, state, it's, it's a statement. Who is this Hashem that we're asking, Rufa'inu Hashem and Neirafe? Who is this Hashem that we're asking, Vahale Rufu Ashleim Alachol Makaseinu? Who is this being? He's the right, Bechol Ama Yisrael, but it's not a bakasha. It's a statement. So there are a few obvious questions. Question number one is that when he talks about the bracha of Asher Yatzar, the general bracha of Shavak Vahoda, so there it's, it's quite wide. HaKash Baruch is a Reife Kol Basar. HaKash Baruch heals all humanity, all mankind. And suddenly, when we describe HaKash Baruch when we ask him for a fool for us, we're limiting him. We're minimizing him. It's more confined. He's a Reife Chayle Amo Yisrael. Sounds like he's not a Reife called Buster. That's a stira. Now, if you want to say, well, maybe we're only asking for Klai Yisrael. Okay, you're asking for Klai Yisrael. But when you're describing the power, the being that has the ability, you should describe him as a Reife called Buster, not a Reife. Chole Ama Yisrael, that's too confined. Second problem is, we say by Reife Kol Basar, it's a Yisrael Reife Kol Basar, all, all humanity. Why don't you use the Russian Reife Kol Chole Ama Yisrael? All the people who are Chole and Ama Yisrael, he heals. It sounds again, we're minimizing a Kaddish Baruch Hu. Instead of confining him, limiting him, instead of being the expansion of a Kaddish Baruch. And then you have the third question is that by the Brach of Rifa'inu, we say he's a Rafe Chaylei 
Amo Yisrael. And by Rofe Kolbasa, it doesn't say Rofe Chole Kolbasa, or Rofe Kol Chole Basa. Here it doesn't mention the word Chayla. See, you have three distinctions between the two brachas. One is the limitation of Amo Yisrael versus Basa, humanity. One is, we say Chaylim versus everybody in the Ashi Yatsa. And the third thing is, in, in Rafi Kolbasa, you say Kol, and over here you don't say Kol. Another question, another dik is that uh, the Somach Chasima always has to be Meya Chasima. When you have a Bracha, so you, whatever's the sentence prior to that Bracha has to be, I guess, uh, a prelude to that bracha. It has to be me'ena chasima. And, and suddenly over there you say, melech reife neman verachma ata. First of all, you don't mention Yisrael. And suddenly you bring a new mead over here called the mead of malchus, kingship. You know, refuah is a function of a doctor. But it's not the function of malchus. So the obvious question here is also, why do you spe specify the word melech over here in terms of refua and just don't keep it the more general, I don't want to call it generic, but the more general uh, word of uh, HaKadosh Baruch who's the, he's a reifei. Reifei ki el reifei neman rachma ato. Why do we have to bring over here the fact that HaKadosh Baruch is a melech? So in order to understand this, I, I think we have to comprehend the nature of all illnesses, uh, the disposition of an illness, and I'm talking about every illness, and I'm talking about the predisposition of all illnesses, and uh, what happens once a person takes ill, or he's diseased, or afflicted, does this illness take a life of its own? Or is every facet of this element predetermined and preordained you know, with a deliberate destination? How do we look at all illnesses? And I think it's a very deep question. It's a very provocative question. And it's a Mafur Shigemara. The Gemara is in Avadazar Dafnun Hay. One of the Avadazar Dafnun Hay so it says as follows Zunin who was obviously lived in the same time of Rabbi Akiva. So he said to Rabbi Akiva, Libi v'limcha yada davadis gachavim les b'mamasha. Your heart, my heart, we all know that there's no substance to Avadah Zarah. It's fake, it's fraud, there's nothing to it. So he asks, why do we see Kachazin and Gavri, we see people that they go into the Bate Avadah Zarah and they go with broken bones. And when they come out, they come out whole. You know, the miracle workers of Avodah Zarah. If there's no substance to Avodah Zarah, so how does Avodah Zarah heal? How does Avodah Zarah look? It looks like that, it does. You can't deny that, but there's no substance. How do you understand that, Rabbi Akiva? Good question. Rabbi Akiva answered him with a muscle, and he said as follows. He said that uh, it's comparable to this case, that he was a trusted person, we'll call him a banker, who was in a certain city, and all the residents of the city, they trusted him, and they deposited their cash with him, and not in the presence of witnesses. Okay? Yet, there was one man, one man in the entire city, who didn't trust him. And therefore, when he came to deposit his money to this banker, what he did was he always came with a witness and he deposited in, the, in front of the witnesses, in the presence of witnesses. One time, just one time. After years, he forgot to bring witnesses when he came to deposit the money. All right? But he's a trusted banker. When he came for the money, for the returning of the money, the wife of the trusted banker said to him, you know what? He deposited this money without witnesses. He never trusted you. Let's teach him a lesson. Let's deny the fact that he gave the money. Let's be a kaifer 
They can't prove it. And we'll teach them a lesson. On that, the banker, the trusted banker, responded. And he said as follows. Should we lose our credibility and act deceitful because of this person, this foolish person who acted improperly and he didn't bring in front of witnesses? No, we have credibility. You don't give up credibility because he's not a nice person. He wasn't a nice person. And he didn't trust us. And finally, we can teach him a lesson. We don't lose credibility because because of a fool who acts improperly. Lama David Daimra, Rabbi Akiva says, he says about Yisurim, all forms of suffering. Let's call that illness. He said, what happens? V'shoshim is shagrin oisim ala adam. HaKadosh Baruch Hu sends these illnesses to afflict a person. So what happens? Mashbiyin oisim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu administers an oath, a promise, a shvua. And what's in the oath? A few things. Number one, that Shalotecho El Bionploni, that they should not go and afflict this person until this specific day. Not a day earlier, not a day later. Let's call it Tuesday. Tuesday, the second week of Adar, the third week of Adar. Not before, not after. That's one part of the Shavuot. The Lotetsu El Plani. And it should not leave the afflicted person except on this other specific day. Let's call it Wednesday, first week of Nisan. All right? There's a Shavuot here. But the Shavuot goes on. And it's also Mashbia, not only which day, but also the Shah Plainis, which hour? Four o'clock in the afternoon. So it hits the person Tuesday in Adar. It leaves the person, not early, not a minute later, at 4 o'clock on Wednesday in Nissan. And then there's two other parts to the Shavuot. One is the Ayyadeh plenty, that the Rafur should come through such and such person, so-and-so of a specific doctor. The Ayyadeh Sam plenty and through a specific medication. It's an amazing thing. You see how predetermined all illnesses it has a start date, it has an end date, an end hour, and it has a whole path, a whole course of healing. One is a specific doctor, and the other is a specific medicine, specific medication. So now what happens? This person went to Dr. A, and the medication didn't work after the first week in Adar. All right, what do you do? They send it to a specialist and he gives it another medication. It starts to work, but it's not doing it. It doesn't feel it's working. And his friend, Wednesday morning in Nissan, tells him, you know, there's a base of other Zara a few blocks down that the miracle workers, why don't you just go there and be over of other Zara, and I promise you'll be healed. So he goes at three o'clock Wednesday in Nissan, and he does that of Zara, and pumped four o'clock Wednesday afternoon in Nissan, he's healed. Whoa, he becomes now Maimon of Zara. It did it. Comes the Yisurim to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and they say to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Bidinu we shouldn't heal this person. Because we heal this person at four o'clock, the way the oath that was ministered to us, and we took it, we accepted the oath. If we heal him, it's going to be such a chill Hashem. Person's going to think Abba Zara did. He's not going to realize it was the medication. It was the Yad Hashem. So what do we do? We shouldn't leave. It's a good time. It's Al Pidin. We assume we're right. You can't create a chill Hashem. But. They obviously judge this in Bezdin Shammai, because the Lashon of the Gemara is the Chayzrim V'Aymer. First, Amri Yisurin Dinu Shlo Neitzay, the Chayzrim. Chayzrim means that they deliberated this. The Aymerim, the Chirif Nei Shashayt is there, Aysa Shlo Kehoigen, Anu Navad Shua Seinu. The Chayzrim V'Aymer means the Yisurin themselves 
realize this, that because this fool acted inappropriately, we're not going to be true and faithful to our oath. When Nishba, Mushaymed, we have no choice. I, there's going to be a chilah. There'll be a chilah Hashem. What can we do? Akash Baruch will bring more Yisur to the person. Akash Baruch will deal with it. But we have to be true to our mission and to the Shvua, and there's no way out of a Shvua, even if it will result in a Chil Hashem. So the person is healed. And that's what Rabbi Akiva told Zunin, it looks like that, but Zara did it. But it wasn't. It was already predetermined on that specific date that he's going to be healed no matter what. As long as he filled the conditions of Rafe Pliny and the Sun Pliny. And that Rabbi Yochanan says it's a Fursh Apostolic, because in the Taycha Ki Savo it says, Chalayim Rayim Vidnamanum. Kajmanas, evil illnesses, Chalayim Rayim, and the Mardashans Rayim Bishli Chusan, evil in its mission, it's going to hurt people, afflict people. Vidnamanum Bishwasan. But nevertheless, it's going to be true in the Shvua. And they will not, even for Achil Hashem, they're going to be true to their oath. Such a fat, it's such an insightful Gemara. Because you clearly see that when the start point and the end point of all illnesses is exact, precise, it's definitive, very strict rules, a very strict path, that the, they are and what about the doctor and the and the medication? No, that, that's like it's night. A person's mukhuyiv like the chavos of avos. A person's it's a stipulation. A person's mukhuyiv to do his ishtadlus, and this is already the way our kaddish baruch created the way it should be, and because of that. He needs this doctor, specific doctor, and a specific medication. But once he does what he has to do, then on that date that was given, predetermined, so the chaloyim will leave the person. This is true. It's part of the teva of the world that Kodesh Baruch Hu created. It's by every chayla and by every machla, according to this Gemara. Again, it's a very insightful Gemara about uh, uh, about illnesses and the healing of illnesses. Obviously, a person needs the, a tremendous amount of siyata de shmaya, an abundance of siyata de shmaya, to make sure he hits to the right doctor and the healer, the physician, and to hit the precise medication and the dosages uh, that, that he needs. That's his shtadlas. Amanah's there. What happens is, he will get healed on the time that he was supposed to be healed. Now, obviously, HaKadosh Baruch Hu put this into the Teva of the Chayla. And obviously, there are, there are there's already different types of Chayla. HaKadosh Baruch Hu guides us, gives us that Shiat Shmaya to know which type of doctor. You're not going to go to a broken arm to a dentist. That's, he's, not, he's not the right thing. He's not the address. So different types of illnesses have different types of physicians. But that, that's all part of the Hashkocha for us to know, the Siyat HaShemayit, for us to know how to go. Because of this, Dora Chaim really says this, is that statistics are just a generalization. And it's not sufficient. You know, what statistics do, and what science does, is it, it creates the Derech HaTeva, the path for us to turn to with proper Hishtadlis. It's our procedures. But the same medication, and we all know this, could work for A, doesn't work for B. And for C, it could create complications. There could be various side effects. The medication could work you know, for some person within a week. Another person, 10 days. Another person, some other. You know, people always share and they say, take this, take that, this worked for me, this worked for me, this worked. Yeah, it worked for you because it was I they wrote it plainly, the sound plainly. That was in the Xero. But for the other person, he needed another doctor and another refuel and another sound. 
And you might ask, what do you need the doctor? Which, what do you care which doctor? It's, ultimately, it's the medication. No, because it's all part of the night. It's a raya. I need a specific doctor or healer. It doesn't say rifi plenty. It says ayide plenty. Rabbi Yasha says even if the person is a charlatan and he healed you, you have to pay him because it was ayide plenty. That was the siyat of the shvaya. That was the pass. And everyone's given that pass, the ability to figure it out. And ayide san plenty. Many times, so various timings, various complications. You need the designation. And, and really, it's two Gemaras. The Gemara Yerushalmi in Durham says, Shalom and Akal, Adam Zaycha, Lisrapis. For not every doctor, a person merits to be healed. And that's why the, in Bavli, in the Malaf in the Durham, the Gemara says that if a doctor uh, was a Mudar Hana, or, or, or a certain Chayla, he's allowed to heal him, even though there are other doctors, because and there's a famous Gmar in the Nida, the Gmar in the Aflam, it says, they're, they're, they're people that don't accept the medication. Because all this is predetermined. It's not about which works, it's about which HaKadosh Baruch Hu brought. But there's a teva to it. So obviously the doctors know what to do, based upon their knowledge. That is the concept of all illnesses, healings, doctors and medication. If that's the case, what role does Tfilah play? What, what does it do? Is it for the Siata de Shmaya? You know, Siata de Shmaya, I find the right doctor? Is it for the Siata de Shmaya, I get the right medication? It can't be. It doesn't sound like that. You know, it doesn't appear so we say, Rufa'inu Hashem vinnei rafe. You know, is for that, get me to the right, back to the right medication. Elamai, because the shvu is only on which day, time, which doctor, which medication. But perhaps the Rufa'inu Hashem Vidnei Rafa is that at least while I have it, until I reach the solution and the timing, so maybe the, the illness should be more passive by me, dormant, you know. It should be dull, you know, lessen the effects. Let me carry it easier. Let me have times of remission, ease the pain. Because the healing really is only going to be young plenty, short plenty, I day right with plenty, I day some plenty. So make it easier for me. You know, let it go out now, remit later on. There's so many different things. Let, and that can't be either. Because we ask HaKadosh Baruch Hu, L'hale refuah shleim alochol makaseinu. We're not asking for remission or passing the dormant. We're not asking for lessening the, the pain, you know, or the effects. We're asking for refuah shleim. How could you ask for refuah shleim? It's mush made. Ne'amonim b'shvosam. What refuah shleim? You see from here clearly that tefillah works to the point that it overrides the shvur. But it's, we know Marsha, many others talk about this numerous places in Shas, and it's clear that tefillah causes nisa, causes things to happen on Mayel Menateva. So not only that, it even causes for a breaking of the shvur of the of the Yisura. But how? What's the process over here? So if you look in Zichron Shmuel at the end, so Shmuel Rozovsky was one sick, and after he was healed, he wrote a beautiful essay about Rufus. And he said as follows, he asked this Kasha, what does it mean? It doesn't bring the Gemaras that he said, it doesn't ask all the Kasha, it's one Kasha. Why do we mention Melech in the bracha of Rafa'inu? And he says, because Melech has the ability to pardon. Just like in Malchus the Ara, in this world, the, the chief of the state, Melech, in the midst of somebody's sentence, 
he can pardon the person, even though he's still guilty, he has the right to pardon against all laws, he can do it. So too, the Melech Malchi Amlochim HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in the function of Malchus, he could pardon a person before the day, before the hour, before even the doctor, and before the, the Sam Pliny. It's the ability to pardon, to go against the Shvur. He's the Melech. He could go against the Shvur. He go against the nature of the Yisurim. And that's called, he's functioning, Lamailam and Ateva. Teva is the laws of nature. The Melech could go against the laws, so the laws of nature. So Kaj goes against the laws of nature. That's one thing he says. And then another paragraph, he says something else is also fascinating. He says, the Uma Sa'olam, the Derech Klau, as a, a rule of thumb, he says, uh, their refuse come Ayyidei Teva. You know, like the Rotsan Atmidi of Kodesh Baruch Hu, as he embedded in this world. And what's the Teva? The Teva is the Yisurim have marching orders. What to do and when to leave. But Kla Yisrael has a different Anhaga. They have an Anhaga of Lamailu Menateva. It's a special Yichud for Kla Yisrael that now we're not confined to this Geras HaTeva. And a Kodesh Baruch Hu can heal us even against the Teva. That goes hand in hand. In other words, beforehand, against the Shvur, against what the Yisurim naturally will be doing. And everyone's Machla is different. There's no two Machlas the same. The no two refuse is the same. Never ever. And the no two zardins are the same. But each one has its teva. Akash Baruch go against the teva. And what's that midah? Obviously the other of Shmuel Ruzovsky. That mead is the mead of Malchus. So now, let's learn the Shmuel. Let's learn the Tzvila. But yes, Akash Baruch Hu, v'halei refuah shleimu l'chol makaseinu. When I ask you to diminish it, to be passed, to make it more passive, to lessen it, to put it into remission. We're asking for a complete healing, a complete that is done with. We're asking for that part and stop. When? In the midst of the mafla, in the midst of that illness, not when it's over. Oh, you can't do that. There's a shvur to the Yisurim, there's a teva. No, he tell Melech, because you're the Melech, and the Melech has the ability to pardon. Yeah. And what type of Melech are you? You're a Neman, true. You're true to the word, to the laws of Teva. You're true to the Shvua, just like uh, that. I understand you're a Melech that's true, but you're also Melech Rachman. But you also have this part of the compassion, the mercy, the loving kindness. And that loving kindness, use that in your malchus and pardon us. And that's what we finish off. It's me'ena chasima. We say, because the Kodesh Baruch is the reife chole, while the person's still sick. Not when he's, not when the sentence is over. In the midst of it, before he even did maybe the shtadlas, before he got the right doctor, before he got the right medicine. In the heat of the machla, Rafei Chayle, of who? Amo Yisrael, of Kla Yisrael. Because Kla Yisrael works the Mile Manteva. Kla Yisrael is Makabu Yom Malchus. Kla Yisrael is Makabu Yom Malchus Shemayim all the time. So we're invoking your Malchus. And we're invoking your Achmanus. So Rafei Chayle, Amo Yisrael. But it doesn't say Kla, because not everyone does that. It's not automatic. It comes davka and davka. It comes the ayideya, ayideya tefila, uh, and Rabbi Yaakov Emden, the Maisa, says this mafurish the ayideya tefila because his baruch Hu goes against the shvur. Rabbi Yaakov Emden is right there. And the Zara answers a kasha, a steer from the Tesis in Rosh Hashanah. Masha Enkeng, Rofei Chole. Rafei Kolbasa, Asher Yotza is the bracha about Teva, the anatomy of a person, the nature of a person, and a person gets sick. 
Kaddish Baruch already sent the Rafua before the Makkah. Before that Yisur hit into a person, it already had its exit strategy. When it's going out and how it's going out. So when is a Kaddish Baruch Hu do the Maisa Rafua in nature? It's built into the nature of the Yisur before it even comes and makes the person sick. So he's not a Rafei Chalei Kol Basa, or not Rafei Kol Chalei Basa. He's a Rafei, the Basa. When? At the outset. Of who? Of every Basa. You didn't need to feel for that. That was built into the Yisurim. That's the person that had Xeris Misa. If you had Xeris Yisurim, so he's a Rafei Kol Basa. And that's to everybody, Umas Ha'elam and Kala Yisrael. That is the bracha of Teva. But the bracha of Rufua, with the Eino Hashem and Neirafe, that's the bracha of Lamaila Mena Teva. And that's why it happens to be the eighth bracha in Shemana Esrei, Kalape Mila, who the Maral says many a time. He explains that the number eight stands for above the plane of nature, is Lamaila Mena Teva. That also Lamaila Mena Teva. Ah, so it makes sense because this bracha is a bracha that we're begging the Kaddish Baruch Hu, deal with us with your midah of Melech and your midah of Rachmanus. So even if the doctors, that's why doctors say there's no hope, they're 100% right, but that shall all be And even they're not so right because what happens is. All they had to do was determine what the fool and that Kaddish Baruch takes from there. It's all about the, it's all about the Xero. And therefore, doctors are not supposed to give up. They're supposed to do all their status. You know, we say, Ayish Eimahem Rishos, Allah Shem Nechazanesh. When we say, I feel Kerem Chada Al Sarech, you can't be, you can't give up. You have to be Ms. Paolo. You can't give up. That is, so now we go again. Melech Neman Verachman. Rachman means it should be earlier. By the way, we see this. I mean, this Lush and Rachman, that should be Kaidam. Where do we see that? You know, anyone that's in Shaduchim knows that. Because the Gemara in, in the Mayakatan says that certain times you could get engaged because Shema Yekadmenu Acher Yakidmenu Verachman. Because maybe somebody else will go and take the Shidduch. With what? With Rachman. With Rachman Shemayim. Berachman. So you see, Berachman has the power to be mocked in something. To be mocked in something. So that's exactly what we say here. Melech Neaman, the Shuas of the Rachman, that the Mida of Lahaktim this, and then it's it's not everybody, and that's what we ask for the Rufur Shlema. So again, so the Bracha Hashayatz is the Bracha of Teva. It's predetermined. The bracha of Rafa'inu is the Mayra Manateva. That's only for Chalayan Mo Yisrael, because they're the only ones that can be having healing in the midst, in the heat of the Machla. Unlike the Umar Sa'ilam, is only when the Machla is, is finished. And uh, if you want to say it in other terms, the terms are as follows Asher Yatsa is the bracha of Be'ita. Rafa'inu is a brach of Achishema. We know by Gula, you know, in the Gula Asida, there's a determined date, but Kashbaru could advance it, he could make it earlier. Determined date is called Be'it, and it's time. That's the nature. Achishena means to bring it earlier, you know, prior to that, that's Achishena. It's true in Yeshua, it's true in Rafu also. It was true in Mitzrayim also. In Mitzrayim, it was supposed to be 400 years. Because Baruch took us out a little earlier, 190 years earlier. Achishena, there was a concept called Achishena. And it's true by Rafua and specifically. Rafua has to do with Yitzhi Mitzrayim. And it's part of the makeup of the Bracha. Suddenly you're talking about Yeshua's. And it's true by all Yeshua's, personal Yeshua's, public Yeshua's. You know, it, it makes no difference. Yeshua has the ability of Achishena. So does Rafua have that ability 
of Achishema. And, and that's what a person has to think. So a person, when he's davening, has the ability to really control things, against the Yisurim, and he has the ability to heal a person himself and his people he davens for, way before they should have been healed, way before the Xavier. In other words, he has the ability to cause the mouth to pardon the person and to have the get of Achichema. What does this have to do with Hatzala? It's such a beautiful Chafetz Chaim. Chafetz Chaim is in the, the second chilek of uh, Aves Chesed in Hagar in the Parakeh. Somebody showed this to me recently. And the Chafetz Chaim says as follows. When there's a Midas Hadin, is Gaiver. And unfortunately today we're living in a, in a Midas Hadin. There's no question there's a Midas Hadin that's misgaber on the world and on Klai Yisrael. So what, what, what could you do? How are you fighting a Midas Hadin? So the Chavetz Chaim is rice. Yesh lechazek the Midas HaChesed. When there's a Midas Hadin, the antidote is to, to be mechazek in the Midas of Chesed and Rachman. And he says, Sha'ayyadzer, when you machazik with the midas of Rachamim and Chesed, you oira midas a chesed by a Kaddish Baruch. You're awaking the midas a chesed, you're invoking it, you're causing a Kaddish Baruch's midas a chesed. And then he says, he brings from a ton of Yom, he says that in Mitzrayim, there was a real midas hadin, and Bruce hadin, and there was no way out. How were they going to fight the mitzvah? So the, the Yidden made a pact amongst themselves. They're all Nitzrachim. Everyone's in need. And there's no way out. They couldn't fight it. But they said, they made a bris, they made a pact. And they said to each one do chesed for the other. Ruvain, who's in dire need of chesed, will do chesed for Shimon. And Shimon, who happens to be in dire need of chesed, will do chesed from Ruvain. And if they all do chesed one to the other, HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, Akav HaKaymah, if those who are needy are doing chesed, so I, Akav HaKaymah, should be do the chesed. And he says, that was the Sibos of Gulas Mitzrayim. Now, what was Gulas Mitzrayim? That was Achi Shena. That was Kaidim Hazman. So, what the Kala Yisrael did, invoked HaKadosh Baruch Hu's chesed to be, have the Yeshua and I'll be Derek Nisim, Nisim Gluyim, Nifloyim. And he looks, that's Nachista Bechastacha Amzuga Alta. Nachista Bechastacha Amzuga Alta is the Bizchus, the Gemilas Chesed of Kla Yisrael. And he says, the Zacharti La Chesed Norayach, that beautiful Pesach, Avos Pulisayach, Bechach Achrai Bemidba Be'eretz Lozur. Which chesed is that referred to in particular? That's the chesed, the Meha Nu'urim, and the Meha Nu'urim of Chavetz Chaim says that was in Mitzrayim. That chesed. And because of that, they generate HaKadosh Baruch Hu's chesed. So I tell you, Hatzala is an institution, every one of them, it's not just an institution, every individual. When they come to save people, and the selfless dedication, giving up their family, their time, their resources, their businesses, their lives, putting themselves in the Sokana, they're not paid for that. What, why do they do it? It's a labor of chesed, deep chesed, deep rachmanis, deep avis yisro, deep avis Hashem. And when they do their acts, they're invoking HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Midas HaRachamin of the Kikel Melech Neman V'Rachman Atta. So when they go on a call and with all the Kaifas, they, they, they save the person, they resuscitate a person, they help a person, they give chizik to a person, it makes no difference. Whatever they're there to do, they did. Bring them to a hospital. Suddenly, not only are they saving a life, but they're causing the person to be healed earlier than the Xer was, than the Teva was, than should have been. 
That's their mindset feel. What we do in feeling, they're doing in action. And that's, that, that's a real hot solo. And, you know, when, when you look at it, you, know, you, you have to view hot solo. They're not EMTs who are using the power of EMT. That's the power of their status. They are Bale Siata de Shmaya, who carrying the mission of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and what they're doing is they're generating, they're inducing his Misa Chesed. So now which hospital they bring you to? No matter what they're going to do, wherever they do, there's a, it's a kim of a Halei Rufur Shleim Olachum Makaseinu Ki Kel Melech Nehman Verachman and that itself causes the Reifei Chayle Amo Yisrael and that, that, that's their power. And it's way greater than what we really think. And in uh, Yitzhak Hashem, it should be for all of us, a time of Achishena and all our Yeshuas and all our Gulas, and especially in the time, these times, and we should be all married together with the Achishena Uvalu Tzion Gayal. <laughs> Uh,